Hello students, welcome. Previously, in KCC preparation tips, KCC chemistry paper one, we were dealing with form four, chapter one. That's chemistry of acids, bases, and salts. In part one, we have done the KCC questions from 2004 up to 2006. So in part two today, we are going to do only KCC 207, 2007. So question one, we have borrowed from uh, KCC 207. It was in paper one and question number 15. We are told A, part A of the question, explain why permanent hardness in water cannot be removed by boiling. If we go back to water hardness, we were having two types of hardness, hardness of water. One was called temporary hardness, then the other one was called permanent hardness. So we say temporary hardness is hardness that can be removed by boiling. Well, permanent hardness is water hardness which cannot be removed by boiling. So for us to explain this question of why permanent hardness in water cannot be removed by boiling is that we have to know, first of all, the compound that are present in permanent compound, permanent hardness, or the compounds that are responsible for permanent hardness. Those are calcium sulfate and uh, that of calcium chloride, and we are having magnesium sulfate and also magnesium chloride. So here, the cations that cause hardness of water are calcium and magnesium, and the anion that cause permanent hardness are sulfate ion and also chloride ions. So what are the effects of heat on sulfate and also chlorides? We are told chlorides are very stable, hence do not decompose on heating. That means they are not affected by heating. The same with sulfates. We are told in Form 2 chemistry of salts, the sulfates, the, the sulfates of potassium, sodium, calcium, and magnesium are stable. Hence, they are not affected by heat or they will not decompose on heating. For that reason, permanent hardness in water cannot be removed. So the answer we can say the calcium, the calcium and uh, magnesium and magnesium compounds, 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 which we mean calcium sulfate, calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, and magnesium chloride in the water. In the water, cannot decompose. Cannot be decomposed, decomposed on heating or by heating. Okay, next, we are told, name two methods that can be used to remove permanent hardness from water. So here, we are told the methods that can be used to remove permanent hardness. So, methods of removing hardness in water were six. Three of them removes only temporary hardness, and three of them removes permanent hardness. So to know the ones that remove permanent hardness, they include uh, that side of addition, addition of sodium carbonate sodium carbonate solution sodium carbonate solution or which you can say washing soda washing soda or you can say soda ash okay number two we are having that iron exchange method iron exchange method we said ion exchange method removes both type of hardness. That means it can remove permanent hardness. Then the last one was that side of distillation method. Distillation. Distillation method. So we are having these three methods which can be removed by permanent hardness. But in case if you are asked the method that can be used to remove temporary hardness, there were three also. The ones that are used to remove temporary Hardness were three. Hardness were three. One was addition. Addition of uh, calcium hydroxide solution to the hard water or to the water containing the hardness. Number two, we were having addition, addition of uh, aqueous ammonia. Aqueous ammonia. And the last one, we were having a method called boiling boiling or you can heat those are the three methods 
that can use that you can use to remove temporary hardness. But here you are asked the ones that are used to remove permanent hardness. So next we are going to go to question two. In question two, we have borrowed case AC two or seven, pep one, question sixteen. We are told the table below shows the tests that were carried out on a solid N and the observation made. Okay, we are told test, we are having test one, two, three. We are having experiment one, two, three, maybe, and these are the tests. So in experiment one, we are told solid N was heated. So when it is heated, the observation that we are going to make is solid N turns from white to yellow. Here, we can see that the compound that we are having here is uh, zinc oxide. Here, know that we are having zinc oxide because the original color for zinc oxide is white, but when it is heated, it will turn, it's going to turn to yellow. It's turn, it will turn to yellow. And here we're having solid N turns from white to yellow, like that. But if it could be that of lead 2 oxide, if it could be lead 2 oxide, the initial color of lead 2 oxide will be yellow lead 2 oxide. If you think that this is lead 2 oxide, the initial or the original color of that lead 2 oxide is yellow. That means when it is cooled, it is yellow, but, but when it is heated, it is going to become orange. It is going to become orange. So the observation that we have here is solid N turns from white to yellow, knowing that the compound that we have there is zinc oxide. Next, experiment two, we are having dilute hydrochloric acid was added to solid N. So we say solid N is zinc oxide. So that what will happen when zinc oxide is added to hydrochloric acid. So that means neutralization ratio will happen and zinc chloride plus water will be formed. So this solution will be zinc chloride solution. Okay, next in experiment three, we are told to the colorless solution obtained, to the colorless solution, to the colorless solution obtained in test two, test two that's the zinc chloride solution, comma, excess sodium hydroxide was added. So that means if you are having a solution containing zinc, zinc ions, zinc 2 ions, and you add excess sodium hydroxide, what will happen there? That means we are going to get a white precipitate was formed, I and mean, the observation is a white precipitate was formed which dissolves to form a colorless solution. That means we are going to get, first of all, the a white precipitate of zinc hydroxide, zinc hydroxide. So when this zinc hydroxide reacts with excess uh, sodium hydroxide, it reacts and it shows it is amphoteric nature by forming a compound called sodium zincate. Sodium zincate. Sodium zincate is written like this, which is a colorless solution. Okay, next, let's go and see the questions that we are asked. So we are told, write the formula of the anion in solid N. So solid N, we said we're having zinc oxide. So what is the anion in zinc oxide? The anion will be oxide ions. Oxide ion. That will be the formula because we are told the formula. Next, the colorless solution formed in test 3. So the compound is sodium zincate, like that. So if we're told the anion, the anion will be the zincate ion because we have sodium ion, which is now the cation. That means zincate ion here will be the anion. So how are you going to write that compound? So we are going to write Zn in bracket OH, close the bracket 4, then the judge here will be 2 minus. It will be 2 minus. Because here, the